An item of supposedly known age is used for calibration. No supposedly about it. An item whose date we do know is used for the purposes of calibration. A common items used are amino acid, racemization dating methods, and tree ring dating methods, of all things. And then, of course, come into this, fudge factors. Mm. You missed a few. For those of you who are interested, here they are. You know, dating methods are highly imprecise. In fact, they're all pretty much worthless because they're based upon assumption, you see. Repeating a lie does not make it any more true. So long as they're based on assumptions, without empirical evidence, then of course, they're worthless. Then it's as well that radiometric dating methods, including carbon-14, all have evidential support despite the creationist claims to the contrary. In fact, there are so many problems with carbon-14 dating, I don't even have the time to describe all of them to you, much less expound upon them. How convenient. In actual fact, the creationist does not expound upon this information, not because there is a lot of information that he has to cover, but because he knows he's making this stuff up and pulling it out of his nether regions. And this is what Mr. Pendleton was alluding to. There's so many variables and pitfalls involved in dating methods, it's not even funny. They are absolutely, completely imprecise, not actually truly scientific. We use scientific methods to try to make it work, but it's just not really scientific. But you think that it is. You think that it's locked tight, solid evidence, empirical information comes from them, which of course it's not. You believe that because you've been told to believe it, and that's called brainwashing. Again, the creationist projects the flaws of the creationist perspective onto actual science. There does exist evidence. The principles used to determine how to use the various radiometric dating tools are publicly available to anyone who wishes to utilize these methods. And everything needed to calibrate and use these tools is available to everyone, including the creationists who shit all over the scientific method with their lies. Here's an idea, Mr. Creationist. If you're so convinced that the dozens of radiometric dating methods are flawed, go and devise your own. Third, a reservoir effect exists in ocean animals due to different sources of carbon consumption. You just... We've been here before. Moving on. And fourth, accelerator-based mass spec techniques allow much more precise dating than earlier decay rates. Mass spectronomy dating has its own set of problems, and virtually all the problems with decay rate dating apply as well. If you go to this website, you'll find a whole list of quotes from scientists which describe these problems. It might be a better idea to go directly to the scientific journals in which these problems are discussed in context. Scientists openly acknowledge these problems of radiometric dating and other techniques, and how to overcome them by proper implementation of those techniques. What this amounts to is an indirect method of quote mining. And uh, which includes calibration, which is a big problem for the very expensive and length time consuming and uh, not wholly accurate mass spectronomy dating methods. Now if you go to this website, c14dating.com, you'll get yourself a little lesson in hedge money. You see, if you actually researched evolution theory and scoured the internet visiting evolutionist websites, what you'd find is that often critical links which provide critical information upon which the foundation of much of their theories are based is unavailable. What utter bollocks. There's a difference between discussing problems and workarounds and blatantly misrepresenting actual science. The creationist is playing the evil evolutionist conspiracy card. Such as the link for calibration in this website. Now the reason for this, of course, is because their information is continuously scrutinized. This scrutiny is most intense when it is from the actual scientists who make use of these techniques to carry out their work. And it's constantly changing, because it's constantly false. The creationist doesn't understand the scientific method. It is constantly changing because as new data becomes available, Refinements and adjustments help to improve the accuracy of these techniques and subsequently the results garnered from them. That's the beauty of science. It does not rest on its laws but adapts as the need arises, unlike dogmatic belief which will never change. This is because an animal's balance of carbon-14 is maintained by ingestion of carbon in their food. Meanwhile, back in context land... 
Now, they suppose lots of things, one of which, for example, is how much carbon-14 was there 2,000 years ago? We don't know. We weren't there. So we calibrate the data and extrapolate. Or we can stall out all scientific exploration and live in mud huts. Your call. What we do know is things that we know their age, carbon-14 fails to give the right age. If you misuse a tool or fail to understand its limitations, it will give incorrect results. Let's have John give some examples of how this happens. For example, there was a seal that had been dead for 30 years when its carcass was tested with carbon-14, gave an age of death of 4,600 years. A seal recently killed gave an age of 1,300 years. This is because an animal's balance of carbon-14 is maintained by ingestion of carbon in their food. In the ocean, particularly in the Antarctic, a reservoir effect exists which throws off the normal balance. Plants in the ocean incorporate carbon dioxide into their structure from the surrounding water. If the plants live near upswells of water, as they do in the Antarctic, the water may have been flowing along the deep ocean floor for thousands of years. Animals eat the plants, and seals eat the animals that eat the plants. This reservoir of old carbon throws off the dating. The reservoir effect is highly technical, but it's well known to scientists who understand the tools they use. Well, this is well and good, but you've just simply described one of the carbon-14 dating problems that I spoke of earlier. Correct. Now, what you're doing here, though, is making a fallacious claim. You see, in so many words, you're stating that because scientists know this problem exists, they can calibrate for that, which is false. Incorrect. It's like saying, This watch has a problem. It needs to be wound up. If you let it wind down, it'll keep bad time. People claim that people know this and can reset the watches after winding it up again, which is false. That's how absurd this creationist is being. It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. <laughs> impossible. The evidence says otherwise. Ironically, many creationists claim that one can use carbon-14 dating on seashells on Everest or K2 and use this information to prove Noah's Ark. Can anyone say internally inconsistent? 80 years. Unsourced comments are difficult to disprove. Meanwhile, back in context... Uh, the bark from a living tree gave an age of 10,000 years. It was alive. The shell from living snails gave an age of 27,000 years. Some of their membrane and tissue dated at 3,000 years. From the other extreme, we have coal from Russia that's supposedly 300 million years old gave an age of 1,680 years. Unsourced comments are difficult to disprove. This is why we source all of our comments. When your source is Hoven, and Hoven's source is God told me, you're no longer talking about science, lab coat notwithstanding. No sources, you say? Mr. Pendleton is a source. Illiteracy is unimpressive, as is the creationist's continued childishness. Mr. Pendleton is a chemist, not a geologist. Regardless of this, however, his statements and claims need to be sourced. So what's his source? The creationist continues to demonstrate his absurdity. The extant dodos are not hypocrites. They have provided their sources, unlike Nephilim Free, who has only seen fit to produce slides based on specious claims and misrepresented science, or is directly sourcing from creationist propaganda mills. He is a working professional chemist. So what? This amounts to an argument from authority. The fallacy is in using said authority to attempt to exempt the authority from criticism or closer scrutiny and examination. Even if he were a qualified geologist, it would not exempt any claims that he's made on the geological record from comment or criticism.